Welcome to the Ocean Curious webcast and podcast. <laughs> Today, uh, we have our, from our regular Ocean Curious group, we've got Sector 035. Hi. We've got Micah Hoffman. Hello, everybody. We've got um, our own Ginsburg 5051. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah, how it goes in. And then we have Dutch Ocean Guy. Hello, everybody. And today we have a special guest, Ray Baker, also known as Ray Wondersmith on Twitter. Hey, Yay. Wondersmith, Wondersmith Ray. Uh, Wondersmith Ray, yeah, sorry. Wondersmith <laughs> underscore Ray. Wondersmith uh, was taken. I had to add my name. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it makes it personal. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, we are going to start the day with interviewing Ray. And then, of course, after we'll talk about the news. And um, let's go ahead and get started. And just a quick question is, how did you get into OSINT and who is Ray Baker? <laughs> um, well, randomly, actually, um, I, I'm a graphic designer. So that's, that's what I've been doing for the last 15 years, probably. Um, and I was looking for something a little more, you know, creative burnout is a big thing. Probably in every field, burnout is a big thing. But um, having to be creative all the time is gets exhausting. So I've been kind of looking for something else to move into. Um, and I picked cybersecurity because a friend was doing it and said that she really enjoyed it. So I just kind of, I researched it. I, I liked it. So I started to go to Penn State for cybersecurity. And uh, I had been posting online and um, I got tickets to Layer 8. And at Layer 8, I did Trace Labs uh, CTF. And from there, I was just hooked. <laughs> so I, everything I've learned about OSINT has been like on the side. I've, I've learned myself. We haven't done any of it in school or anything like that. Um, so I've just been like absorbing blogs and videos and conferences and whatever I can possibly get a hold of. Well, I think you did a good job uh, from reading uh, your <laughs> your reason blocks. You, uh, well, thank you, you. You, you self taught yourself really well, I guess. Yeah, I have kind of a formula for, for blogs. Like, I don't know much. So in order to teach myself, I pick a topic that I want to learn about and then I write about it so that I have to learn it to, to, to write something. That's a great tip, actually. That's a really, really great tip for beginners yeah. out here. Because you have to be able to teach it. Yeah, that is a good tip. And I think that most of us have learned a lot of those and just kind of, um, you know, on our own as well. I mean, it changes yeah. so fast that that's a, a natural thing. Yeah. yeah I was going to ask how you come up with your, your topics, how you pick the, the things that you blog about, because it, it really does seem like a, a nice organized um, uh, document whenever you're blogging. It's like, here's, 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 here's this, and, and there you go. And so, I mean, how do you pick what, whatever you're blogging about? Just, it interests you? It doesn't feel organized as I'm doing it. <laughs> I, I never feel like they're good when I publish them. Um, I, I pretty much just look through my, my Twitter feed, um, what people are talking about, and if something pops up and I don't know how to do it, I'm like, oh, I wish I knew how to do that. And I just, I, I keep a, a list of all the titles of things that I want to learn about. And then I just write as I get more interested in it. So like the maritime one was just random. I saw, I think it was from um, quiz time and there was, there was a quiz on it and I just picked it. And then I researched a bunch of blogs and uh, news stories and I can go on Penn state's library and look at their journals and stuff and just kind of put it all together. Cool. So you have a non-traditional background for OSINT. You're, you don't come from military or from the intelligence or law enforcement field. No. You, it's just something that interested you and you dove in. Yeah, I think I, I'm a big true crime person. Like, I love true crime. I have a spreadsheet of every true crime documentary and show everything I've ever watched or read on true crime so I don't re-watch it. And... Um, I, I think there's a connection between, I, I can never be a cop, I can never be a detective, but like this is as close as I can get. <laughs> okay. Finding information about people. Yeah. yeah. And so you, you said that you do a lot of self-teaching uh, and you, there wasn't a whole lot of stuff in OSINT or, or, or anything else whatever to go through and kind of uh, motivate you to, to learn more. 
but I know you said you started going to Penn State. What are you doing out there to go through and kind of advance, you know, like the cyber OSINT and other things there? Uh, well, personally, I'm I'm the president of the technology club at Penn State. So our our club is mostly security and risk analysis students with some networking and and other tech related fields in there and some random people who just join from other majors because they like what we're doing. Nice. Um, but I, I focus on the security stuff. So I have speakers come in that talk about OSINT um, along with other security stuff, but I like the OSINT stuff. Um, I, I do presentations uh, for everybody else. Um, I also do the Trace Lab CTF. We just did one at Penn State. And we're also working on a B-Sides, <laughs> which has not been approved yet, but it's in, right. in progress. B-Sides Penn State or B-Sides? Yeah, B-Sides Penn State. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really That's cool. Really... Have, um, you, have you put it to uh... – yeah, I hope so. <laughs> uh, have Have you put your um, your new re uh, gained ocean skills to um, um, any good? So, for instance, uh, like we like to call it the group Ocean for Good. Actually, uh, Joshua uh, has a whole new website about that, doing Ocean for Good. Since you said, well, I will never be a detective <laughs> or a lawyer or or whatever, but you can still put Ocean yeah. to good practice, right? I've actually found that's a good way to get into OSINT because um, a lot of places need volunteers. So they're willing to like let you learn as you do it. So Operation Safe Escape is the one that I weaseled my way into. Um, so I do OSINT work for them, um, helping keep victims of domestic violence hidden from their abusers. So um, they're, they might be in a situation where um, their ex-husband or, or husband has been tracking them in their cars or uh, monitoring their phones stuff like that so we we search what is available on the victim to see what the abuser might be able to find on their location or or their phone or whatever and then we also train them on how to stay secure a right? password management stuff like that really cool interesting awesome. yeah. yeah and you've done work with trace labs as well so yeah, I've um, I'm, I help them with some design stuff. I'm working on that, and then um, I also judged the DefCon CTF, and then ran the Penn State ones. So I, I keep in contact with them. <laughs> was Was Larry the first one you ever did? I don't know. Oh, the first trace. Oh yeah, Larry yeah. was the first one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and the uh, the Wookies were there. They won. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were close. Yeah, that was that was one of the first ones I ever ran. Actually, that's pretty good. Yeah, that was where I met you the first time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we have a very awkward picture together. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah, we did that I at the uh, hacker uh, hacker hall to do. Show notes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, the, but... the, uh, the thumbnail picture. So there's a yeah. in challenge for everybody. Find that picture from Ray and Gin. <laughs> yep, there you go. There you go. I don't know if it exists. <laughs> it definitely. It will after today. <laughs> right. There's a few of them. There's a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly there's a bunch of Photoshop mashups. And <laughs> oh, I can't wait. It's great for my new company. Has any other... I think we have Joe Gray in one of them, too. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, it's Actually, on now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That brings me to mind that um, you just recently posted. Let's see. I need to look at your blog really quick. Um, five tools to detect digitally altered images. Yeah. That was kind of a crossover. I was trying to bring in like my graphic design Photoshop stuff. Yeah. Oh, and I see it's not really the recent. It's just the top one. It's a feature. Yeah. I don't know why it's at the top. August 15th. Yeah. So that just made me think of it. So we'll be just sending, putting up pictures and <laughs> we'll know if they're not the real. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're legit though. They're, they're yeah. awkward and legit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take her word for it. <laughs> so when we talk about OSINT, what, um, what do you really want to learn or get better at? What, what would be your goal? Well, I, I try and keep stay away from tools because, you know, they always change, but I, I need to get better at the ones that do exist just to have that as, as a skill set. So I'm, I'm working on like spider foot now. I want to 
learned Python. Um, I just ordered a computer with Linux only operating system. So that's where I'm going. I don't know Linux yet. So I'm, I'm going to work on that. Um, yeah, so you, can, can we go back just a second? You said uh, that you're not focusing on just learning tools because they yeah. change. Is that yes. right? Yes. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting, that's a, a very interesting way of looking at it, because one of the things that, that we see on Twitter a lot is what's the best tool in OSINT or what are your top five tools? And Nico yeah. said many, many times, you know, your your brain is your best tool, which I think is a great response. And um, so that's uh, that's kind of interesting. But you you, are, you have to take a look at those tools. And yeah. when you talk about tools, are you talking about like browser plugins? Or are you talking about like the Python tools and other stuff? The Python tools. Um like Multigo I've used not a lot, but I, I use it. Um, Spiderfoot I have, I just started cause I'm writing a blog on it. Um, at Python I know nothing about. So that's like a whole new world for me. <laughs> cool. I, I like the tools, but I, I, I hate, I feel like they're lazy a little bit. <laughs> well, the Python is you building your own tools. Yeah. 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 And, and, and there, there is, sorry, go ahead, Micah. No, you go ahead, Gens. I, there, there is there is a lot of benefit to using the tools to kind of automate and expedite yeah. the, the process. You know, there are some <clears throat> tools like the people, uh, PIPL, and like LexisNexis, things like that, to kind of get a statement of truth out of the stuff. So yes. absolutely, there there is there's ways to manually do it, but to get it running faster, yeah. I mean, and, and it is, there is a lot. I, I especially struggle with like the Python scripts and building tools and stuff like that. That's something that I still have to get a lot better with. Uh, but it does get easier, so it is it is kind of a higher barrier to entry. But don't 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 be afraid of them because they really can help and they can save a lot of time and stuff. I think the the part I have trouble with is not working in the field. I don't have many reasons to search for things, so like I have to create situations to like uh, use the tools and and learn them, which yeah. is what I use the blogs for. But you know, you can only write so many blogs while going to school, so. <laughs> Very true, especially using, like I said, and, and I come from this background where I self-taught a lot uh, as well, and I was following along, and I, I would jump into the community and do whatever I could to go through and help out, but it was, it was working 40 hours a week plus whatever for my job, and then doing the same thing with OSINT, you know, finding the time that you had, yeah. uh, coming up with your own kind of uh, ideas and campaigns to go through and do it, and, and hopping onto the bandwagons of other people who were doing public searches and open research, so yeah, it's a... Uh, it, it's it is fun, uh, but it's it's one of those things where, unless you have um, you know specific ideas about what you want to try to search and and, and prove out, it, it can be kind of frustrating. So I, I get you. And I think that's where the volunteer work helps because it yep. kind of gives you a reason to to do it, to learn more. Like if somebody has a situation that you don't understand, you you have to look because you're trying to help somebody. So Ray, um, Ginger T, one of our longtime yeah. uh, listeners, par participants, I, I typed in a question here for you. Uh, it says that you, uh, it sounds like you want to learn the same like types of things as him. Uh, have you got any set plan? So like, how do you decide what are the topics that you're, that you're going to look into? Because going from images to, um, to maritime, you know, that, that's a big shift. Are you just picking things that interest you? So that way you can dive deeper or do you have like some set plan? Uh, pretty much you guys. <laughs> so I see what you guys post and, and everybody else who posts on Twitter um, or LinkedIn or whatever. And I, I just pick something that interests me that I don't know anything about. Sure. And, I just oh. it down. and then when I have time or, you know, if there's a quiz time or something where I need to use it or just failed to use it, I, I go back and I write something about it or learn more about it. Cool. Cool. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that works. So what are some of the other topics you, you mentioned? Uh, Spiderfoot. Um, are there other, like, instead of tools, topics that you're interested in, in learning in the future? Uh, geolocation is something I really enjoy. That's why I like quiz time so much. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know much about it other than what I do for the, the quizzes. Like, I, you know, I've been trying to go through sectors, uh, email quiz, and I, I got to question three, and I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he won't give any hints either. <laughs> oh yes, I do. I do. You didn't want to. <laughs> oh well. It's, yeah, the satellite stuff is hard. Um, I just uh, there aren't many resources for it, 
I know Penn State has like a master's in it, but it's more military focused. I don't see many resources like when I just Google or, or try and look it up. It, it seems to cross over with like journalism and, and Bellingcat, which I guess they have some resources on their site. Everything crosses over. Either yeah. Masters, journalism, the sourcers, it all, yeah. it all merges together. Yep. Yep. All right. What do you find the most difficult? Mm. In OSINT, uh, um, I think the most difficult is, I mean, looking for, for people, but looking for their information on like the dark web, stuff like that, that I haven't really gotten into. I don't know much about. I, that's another thing I would like to learn more about. Um, like I know how to find when somebody's data has been breached, but I don't know what to do with it. Um, so that those sorts of areas, I think I, I find the most difficult. Okay. And we always get the question of how to get into OSINT. What's your suggestion to people just looking at you now and saying, okay, I want to get to where you are. Oh man. Um, just do it. <laughs> I mean, just pick, <laughs> that's pretty much it. You just got to pick like something, yeah. someone, um, just, just start because there's no like perfect situation where you're just going to know everything. So you have to start somewhere. Uh, whether it's like looking up your creepy neighbor or <laughs> or, mm -hmm. or um, researching yourself because you can find out like where where your security flaws are, um, that's probably a better place to start. <laughs> yeah. I think it's yourself, nice to start from from looking for their own uh, information just because then you know that you're proving a positive and that yeah. way you're not like uh, you, you know you can go ahead and do your neighbors and all that stuff, but if you get someone with a common name like Smith or something like that. But if you, if you do look yourself up and you start doing that stuff, it's, it's one thing you can say, Oh yeah, I did live there or, or holy. Right. You can verify. I, did live there. I can't remember 10 years ago. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Ray. We are going to transition yep. to the news sec segment and we definitely want you to pipe in with any information as we go through as Perfect. well. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Nice. Yeah. Um, again, here we go. Wondersmith underscore Ray on Medium. And I do want to show everyone your Twitter page as well. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and please so, keep up doing blogs because I really enjoy reading them. Oh, thank you very much. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, and you know, and that's the other thing about blogs is that when you dive deeper into a topic, you help all of us because, like, you know, you dive into a topic and then report it, then, you know, I, I can use that to, to launch my, you know, my investigation into that area as well. But you've already done some of the work. So thanks for contributing. Yeah, I think a lot we all of times, bounce off each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of times people are afraid to write write a blog because other people have done it but everybody has done everything a million times so you just gotta find the angle on it that and everyone different. has different angles i agree yes yes because like as a graphic designer i might look at it completely different than somebody who's never done anything creative like that you know mm -hmm. yeah absolutely okay so first thing i'm going to go to is our patreon page i just want to remind everyone if you feel like helping us keep this thing uh going we do have our patreon some levels and i think we have a new person who donated yeah okay well, we'll at the very bottom your external on branding so i'm not gonna read, be able to yeah. read that but. okay yeah i'm not gonna be able to pronounce, pronounce either but thank you very much for direction on branding all right okay and we'll move on to some news first thing dfir training and i believe this was sector 035 and technoset who brought this up they have a resources section and in their downloads they've got info oops let me highlight that again downloads they've got infographics and cheat sheets and we are on that page right here do you have any specific one sector that you wanted to point out no uh, I, I see that um some of the intel techniques ones are uh, on there but mm -hmm. on the bottom right uh <laughs> season mind maps just a whole lot of different ones from uh, digital digital forensics uh mm -hmm. osin stuff there's also a specific osin section there are loads and loads of cheat sheets and yeah mm -hmm. oh, so this is really a combination of other people's cheat it sheets that yeah. yeah. i did yes. on here. like there's i'm on heart of cars and stuff yeah there we go a lot of sand. okay cool yeah, the intel technique ones yeah, and it actually also reminded me of uh, talking about SANS, um, mm -hmm. one of our sponsors. Um, they also have a lot of really cool downloads of their posters on the website. And 
I've already downloaded loads of them and I got a few ones from, uh, from my canal. Um, the same thing. It's the same, like these cheat sheets, really cool stuff. Oh yeah. There's a ton um, of them. I have some Toddington. of those posters. Yeah. So Toddington International also, there's a bunch of their cheat sheets around here. Yeah. Those Toddington International ones are actually really good. I've downloaded those and I, I, I've used those. I, I really like their stuff. Yeah, the one thing that I would that I would just caution people on is that these cheat sheets, you know, they they take a lot of effort and time to to create, or the posters do, and then you know how fast the OSINT world changes, and many times, like I saw one there for Facebook International search strings right up there for Toddington. I would imagine that that's not not updated. So um, just you know, keep in mind that that these are great starters for your research, and you always have to look at like things like Ray's blog and other places that are currently and Ocean Curious, of course, that are currently blogging about the changes in the field. And I would wow. say also even Toddington. I mean, if you can go, if you download the cheat sheet here, yeah. if you go directly to Toddington, you can probably download the updated one. Yeah, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And not only and, that, I do have to say what I really like about cheat sheets is not so much that you have something you can constantly look at, but when you're stuck with something like a regular expression or just some simple Python script, you just look at it and you get new ideas and you get new ways of thinking. And you go, like, oh, I can also have a look at something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move on. Next up, Dupla Checker. Now I know that Dutch had shared this one. Yeah, I'm uh, fairly recent too. I just came across this one this afternoon here, over here. I was doing some research for uh, some new courseware I am writing on. And, um, well, I ran into this website and I found it really interesting because it basically um, is a placeholder for uh, text analysis tools, but also keyword research tools, websites, IP addresses, uh, SEO checking, but also uh, doing... Um, things you can do like tools um, what's the the, the ghq tool uh cyber the 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 hex to a binary and all that kind of stuff um, translations so it's your all-in-one ocean ish cyber i don't know threat intelligence platform tooling link station yeah it's, it's kind of like the last <laughs> one it has the cheat sheet. this one goes this one has link or uh tool checks yeah, and I, well, they all work well. I tried the paraphrasing tool. That's an interesting one because you feed it uh, an amount of text and it will try and paraphrase your text. It's really funny when you do it for, let's say, a blog you have written. It's mm -hmm. so hilarious to look at what it produces. Oh, yeah. But, I find it interesting how many of these tools cross over with marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but well marketeers try yeah. to find try to target people so they try to find people right mm -hmm. so that's what find interests yeah. yeah yeah i saw a really interesting uh uh tiktok and kirby you got me hooked on tiktok um Sorry. where somebody said Who's the ours? easiest <laughs> way to to write an essay is essentially find something that somebody else wrote throw it into one of these paraphrasing tools then run it through grammarly make sure that everything checks out and then that you got your own essay. I mean, um, that is not the way to do it, of course, but uh, I thought it was an interesting uh, use of these tools as well. I will yeah. not be using that. <laughs> so I could have <laughs> Dutch's, Dutch's blogs and I could pull them into paraphrasing and then yeah. yeah. So my all my blogs, to be honest. <laughs> 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 uh, to be honest, the... Oh, is that what you've That's done funny. here? Yeah. <laughs> so no, but it it was it's just another um, website with tools that will come and go, like we discussed earlier this uh, webcast. But there are some really cool ones in here, and they work pretty decent. Yeah. 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 All right. Next up, we have geolocated in a two-second video. It was a quiz from Lars. He said, "Where did I take this video?" And anybody want to talk about this uh, post? Ray. Uh Go ahead. <laughs> I, I breezed through this the other day. So I, I know it was a quiz time that was put up. It was a, a 20 second video. Um, and I believe, yeah, it was about where a train was going. Mm -hmm. And then we needed to pro provide proof. I didn't actually do this one. So, yeah. So, okay. So, oh. 
I mean, the article is going through um, basically how they figured it out. So they're saying, you know, they guess somewhere in Germany, they give you all the different steps. Yeah, sure and he went um, over yeah, all the true. different uh, trains to find this type of logo, and he actually found a website with uh, from train enthusiasts who uh, mm. have articles and information about each and every trains in Germany. So that's when he found the train, he found the logo, and from there on he could find the uh, the lines that they were uh, driving on. And mm -hmm. then from looking from the S-Bahn, which is like, yeah, uh, what is it like? Um, small local commuter train um, and the Deutsche Post, um, the post office, uh, he actually managed to find the exact location where uh, the video was shot. But a, yeah, a lengthy uh, write-up, a little bit in the style of uh, what Nick's Intel has been doing uh, the last couple of months. A really, <laughs> really nice blog, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, really nice uh, explanations here and including, you know, graphics, etc. Step by step and, of how we. Yeah, and lots of links, lots of explanations. That's mm -hmm. how I love them. Yeah, that's that's nice because I I always have trouble with the video ones because I never quite know how to, you know, a, an image you can just start with a reverse image search, but the the videos I never know how to start. All right, so we'll move well, on for, to the next. Uh -huh. Well, for, if I might add, for videos, uh, you can take seals from videos, right? Yeah. Just, right. just as an idea, and then you and you can even stitch them up and create a panorama from a video, which will give you a oh, better yeah. overview. Mm -hmm. So, just yeah. for you to answer your question, yeah. I don't know where to start from a video, but I really like it when they do this turning around with the camera because then you can get a really good panorama overview when you stitch those pictures together. And there yeah. are tools out there that will auto stitch for you. And it's so cool. easy. But for you being a creative person, I think you can figure that stuff out. Yeah, I usually do that. I take a like a snag it of the the video yeah. and then search and, it. Yeah, and didn't, Bell, didn't Bell and Cat or somebody do that for the uh, the guy that they were looking for in Iran? That they stitched oh, together yeah. a bunch of the pictures. I yeah, they so. did, but also for the the Al Al Farley case, which is right up in Bellingcat, it's a, a rebel group leader who was responsible for a lot of killings, and there were also these short amounts of video. Well, it's just common practice where you do uh, uh, reverse image or video searching, grabbing stills and stitching them up to get a better view of what you see. Yeah. The other thing is, um, you said they go to the, you know some train enthusiasts. Look for those enthusiasts because you know there's airline enthusiasts that like basically watch every airliner and take, do the tail number tracking that sort of thing. There's enthusiasts for again when we were talking about the satellite tracking. There's satellite tracking enthusiasts. There's you know you get to those boats. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and cars. There's people that just go around and take pictures of car license plates and mm -hmm. post it to yeah. like plates mania and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I recently, this is a really funny story. I recently ran into someone who had an OSINT case where they had a picture and there was a man on it who had some really specific socks. And even for that, there's a community uh, writing up on which models of socks can be bought where in which country. Socks. How cool is wow. that? I yeah. know there are for shoes, but I didn't know there would be for socks as well. Yeah. yeah that's a site I use for my sock puppets to decide what part of the world to use them in. No. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's two o'clock in the morning. The jokes don't get done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Web robots. Actually, I'm just uh, bouncing off of a Micah Hoffman tweet for right. not too long ago that he mentioned uh, one of my favorite sites, but he mentioned in conjunction with robots. Web Webrobots.io, and I had not heard of this one. So. Yeah. So Webrobots.io. They make a great, great extension that that Nico and I actually used in our uh, previous webcast two weeks ago uh, to scrape data. This this website has a a, a it is essentially the the people that make these uh, web scraper tools. So if you need to retrieve uh, a bunch of data from a website, you can either select all and copy it, or you can go in the source code, or you can use like Instant Data Scraper, which is the name of the, the wonderful free uh, plugin. And it looks for tab HTML tables in some web page that you're on, and then it will put that all that content into a CSV. And like I said, uh, Nico and I played with it for, uh, for the last webcast to, to pull out a tabular table. 
tables and it works on any website because as long as there's like a HTML table and, and stuff is formatted in columns and rows, really nice. And they make other tools too, of course. Uh, but Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And of course you mentioned also one of my favorite websites out there, viewdns.info. So I, I have to bring them up as well. Yeah. Yeah, View DNS. I love their website. I, I love um, the fact that not only do they give you the free tools with, that are fairly ad free, you know, they're, they're just like, hey, use them as much as you want. And then when you run out of time or, or you need more data, because like some of them, like, like I do a lot of demos with the reverse who is. And the thing that you need to do about the know about the reverse who is and other things on this website is that it, the tool, the website itself tells you, hey, I'm only giving you the first 500 results, which for many websites is absolutely fine or many, many domains. But um, if you need more, their API here on viewdns.info and a couple other sites too is actually pretty darn reasonable as far as pricing. It's not one of the, the huge, you know, ones that are like, you know, $1,500 a month for the API. It's, it's mm -hmm. relatively reasonable. So yeah, yeah good, good, good stuff. All right, next up, BBC News. Stalker found Japanese singer through a reflection in her eyes. Did you guys read this one? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, and, you, and at one point you got to like admire, and then the other point you got to be like freak the heck out because, you know, with these really high imagery, uh, really high pixel count cameras that take, you know, multiple focal distance, it's amazing what you can pull out of imagery now that's just posted yeah. to social media. I know. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's crazy, yeah. But but also, um, especially what you, what you just said, uh, Michael. It was the, the cameras nowadays. I remember being at a hacker conference a few years ago, and they took pictures from security guards their key rings, so yeah. they could three D print those keys. So it's not only the reflection in someone's iris or eyeball; it's also just making a high quality picture with a fairly uh, low priced camera nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So next up, um, got the chat people in my way here. <laughs> I would think sunglasses too. You would get a lot of reflections in sunglasses. And a lot of hotels, yeah. like a lot of people taking pictures uh, via hotels and stuff like that. So you get uh, the reflection of who actually took the picture. Um, I know I've used that before. Uh, yeah, but sunglasses. Anything with a reflective surface, you know, you can get more more information other than you think and neil from our audience uh he says that uh and the added ai artificial intelligence uh mm -hmm. sharpens the image of the three cameras that are in like the new iphones and i guess uh, some of the newer uh android phones um so it, it not only you not only have that optical mm -hmm. capture but you also have ai going hey let me make this better for you and better is more detailed. And yeah, there was a story about fingerprints and peace yeah. signs. Yep. Yeah. What was the other? Was there was what... another tool that somebody came out with that helped with blurred images, and it would actually use like ML to go through and kind of stitch together the, almost the pixels to go through and make it a clear image too. Right? Yeah, it was Somdev, didn't he? And he yeah, did the okay, yeah. blurring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, when you have the pixelated photo, and and then you know if, if you just take that pixelated photo and you throw it right into Yandex, Yandex is like, here it is. You don't even have yeah, to depixelate it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Torbox. I saw that uh, there was a conversation that tagged OSINT Curious with Torbox. It's not something I've used before, but it looks like a browser, a br uh, sorry, a Tor router using R Raspberry Pi. Did anybody use this before? No. Uh, no. Looks like no. Uh, you have you set up your own router with your own Wi-Fi that puts everything over Tor. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is, is you throw up a Raspberry Pi inside your house that its uplink is only sends traffic through uh, through Tor. It's kind of like, it reminds me of Orbot. If you guys know about that, Orbot is uh, virtual machines. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm sorry, not Orbot, uh, Hoonix. Hoonix, oh. where you have a web gateway that sends all the VM traffic from the from the workstation up through Hoonix, uh, through Tor. But uh, but yeah, this is a great way to Torify all of your traffic in your house or on a certain network segment, um, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. How did you like with the, it? I think it's also fun if you like captchas, right? Captchas. CAPTCHAs, yeah, when you fire this up behind your own router, it will only present CAPTCHAs while surfing on the internet, right? Because uh, it will detect your Tor connection. For, so for 
for your investigative moves, it would make sense. But I think from for oh, yeah, people like the- not doing open source intelligence or not investigating from their home, their surfing experience, I expect it not to be that fun when you're going through Tor yeah. all the time. Well, it would be slow, which is why I it, Tor drives me nuts. It's always so slow. Yeah. I've heard stories for from people who are in uh, in these re, uh, let's say re- repressive states or countries that they used to get the word out using this 4G connections or 3G connections um, hooked to a Raspberry Pi with a Tor box connection just mm-hmm. for freedom of speech, for instance. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that'd uh, be the perfect thing. That'd be exactly yeah. what it would be. Yeah. For. All right, we got a couple of Twitter threads to go through. So here's one for um, tr- disinformation campaigns. So it looks like, has anybody tried this one? At well, I, I, I picked it up. I ran it like two or three times, but to be honest, this week, last two weeks have been so busy, I haven't given it the amount of attention just to to really say something good or or bad about it. It, it. it works, it runs, but to say if it delivers what it promises, I can tell you yet. And so what the promise is, is that it's gonna analyze the data already shared by Twitter about disinformation campaigns, right? So what is it's going to kind of, what's the idea that it kicks out? Yeah, what I get from it, it, it will, make it even more clear by visualization and that kind of stuff. Okay. So it's going to show uh, like a, a graph. A network like I said, analysis. we we need, we need, we might just need to get back on this one in the next okay. episode. Okay. Well, let's kick this one forward then. All right. The next one. Um, so this is somebody OSINT dot support, which we, we love OSINT support. Um, they have some cool tools, but they said they've got a, they can generate, a high probability of the friends list by just look, leveraging the likes on a Facebook profile. So they said, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it looks like um, they're, they're still doing some testing on that. Um, but they've, you know, basically scraping the profile for the likes. That makes total sense though. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, you yeah. have randoms that will come in and go through and like your stuff, whatever, but you know, your core friends list, especially depending upon how you set your privacy settings up for Facebook, they're the only ones who are going to see that and view that. So if you can extract that stuff, that's that's kind of a, yeah, it's brilliant. Yep. Yeah, I think there's a lot of po- false positives involved in this, especially when you're looking for well-known people, for instance, or celebrities, because they tend to get likes from all over the world. So sure. I think this, this should be used with caution. Especially I think, yeah, I think really for, talking about people with only a few likes, like this yeah. one, 11. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it may be if it's that for that person who has only her, her real friends as friends, and you can't see the, the friends because they block that out on privacy settings, you could try it. But still, in your, I think in your report and uh, overall analysis, you should really point out that there's a large, um, well, a large factor of false positives when you run these kind of things. Right. Not, not saying that you shouldn't do it because there I'm can be verify. really good use cases for this to verify and check if there are certain patterns or to determine if someone always likes someone. Uh, mm-hmm. For instance, maybe it's the stalker you're looking into. That's right. actually what I was going to say is if you cross platform this between the social media, so you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have the other ones, you could see kind of the outliers of where the, the people are following them across different platforms, but you could detect stalkers that way um, with seeing who is so enamored with them that they're crossing, you know, all the different platforms to go through and like all their stuff. So that would make that, that would, that's an interesting. And I was going to say it could work with um, like the trace labs events looking for missing people because a lot of times you need to connect them with their, their friends or they have like a boyfriend they haven't told their parents about if if they're a teenager and you can find out who's liking their. Yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to point out, underneath this tweet is a reply from OSINT Combine, and OSINT Combine is a, uh, one of our sponsors, but they had said that they have a blog post with concept details on the same sort of thing um, as well, so you can see that there's a, a link to that as well. Nice. Cool. All right, next up, first draft news. They have uh, their essential guide to verifying online information, 
And so that's something that's, uh, of course, necessary right now, verifying online information. First Draft News, I, I know that they've had some uh, past ones as well that I've used um, on some of the other search or OSINT kind of uh, information. So I enjoyed yeah, I it. You, you liked it, Ray? Yeah, I liked it. It was very easy to follow. Yeah, I like how they broke it down and, and they explained it. And, and there's some interesting concepts that, you know, a, a lot of us do just just because we, we know it. This was really nice to see it canonized and explained so so eloquently. Yeah, I think, uh, who is it? Craig Silverman has a really good, uh, also the, the BuzzFeed uh, reporter has a good verification Google Doc as well. Um, so th there's there's some other people doing verification stuff like this. But this this was actually very nice. I was traveling a lot while this kind of came out, and I only had a chance to look at it briefly. But yeah, it seems like it's solid. Yeah, definitely solid. Lot a lot of information there. All right, next up. All right. Uh, we have beginner's guide to flight tracking for OSINT. And that came from Cusick and Cusick. And I believe that one, oh, it's, it's actually showing us the Bellingcat article. Yeah. So can open up this new Bellingcat article. Yeah, Giancarlo from Bellingcat, he made a blog on how, well, how you can use uh, various tools, websites to track flights. And it's, um, it's an entry level way of writing up um, the tools how to use them, but also how to use the, the forums and the blogs used by plane spotters if you don't find that valuable information in the flight tracker and the flight radar 24 kind of websites. It's, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed reading uh, Giancarlo's uh, work. Yeah, no, I, for some reason it doesn't seem to be loading for me, but. It's probably again your blockers being paranoid. Yeah, I'm always surprised how much flight tracker information is available. Yeah, I love uh, showing that. Uh, last week, two weeks ago, I was, um, it was, I was doing a, a class, and like it was on day five, which is where we deal with vehicles and stuff. And there was just some tweets out there about a wildfire in California, just north of Los Angeles. So we we literally just pulled up, you know, ADSB Exchange and watched the helicopters and watched the the firefighting aircraft that were flying in circles around this area is really easy to see. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, next one I have Dutch, you keynoted at Europol. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, I wasn't looking at the screen. Yes, I did, I did that, yeah, <laughs> and, and, not, and not only me. Uh, mm -hmm. Sector was there also, and uh, our previous guest, uh, Chris Kubeka, also yep. known as Sec Evangelism, uh, was there. It was a whole uh, day about, um, well, it's the Europol Interpol Cybercrime Conference, which they, uh, I, if I remember right, do every two years uh, in Europe. And the, other, and the every other year they do it somewhere outside of Europe. <clears throat> um, yeah, it was, this was a whole day dedicated to open source intelligence. And I gave a talk about operational security within open source intelligence um, and how to tweak your browser and all that kind of stuff. Kind of similar what I did some blog posts on, on uh, Ocean Curious. And mm -hmm. Sector, well, uh, he gave his own talk. And he, I'm not talking about his talk, but he did it himself. So Sector, oh, would you have to- Plug you a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I talked about the uh, the other way, the uh, defensive OSINT, how you can use OSINT to, well, not really how you can use OSINT to defend yourself or your company or your organization, but I had a bit of more um, talk from the men in the suits. So a bit of a funny, um, funny talk about all the weird and creepy online things that are out there, but also things that go wrong with companies, people posting badges and all that kind of stuff. Um, ICS and, and yeah, just generally spreading the word, please use OSIN to check your own company too, because there's too much stuff going on. So it was a really cool day, really good talks. Cool. You know, I'm um, speaking at conferences. I just went to Osmosis as well this last week, and there were no other 
I wasn't curious people there yet, but I did get to meet OSINT Combined and OSINT Techniques and a couple of other people that I knew from Twitter. So it's been a, it was a really good experience. And I, if I can encourage you people next year, the networking at that conference is perfect. It's great. I met meet great people every time I'm there. I did have to bail early on that one, but it, it's a good conference. Yeah, and um, Technizette said that she was at a Sorcerer conference too, which I know that you've been saying for a long time, and we kind of started out the, on the, this webcast uh, talking about sorcerers and recruiters, and um, and she said that she had a ball uh, doing stuff with that, you know, over there because they they don't call it OSINT, but that's what they do. They find people, right? So exactly. and that's one part of OSINT, of course. But yeah, there's so been much saying that for a long time. Different people doing OSINT and they just don't realize that we're all doing the same thing and we can all learn from each other. Although I feel that the, I mean, there's certain sourcers and marketers that know and investigative reporters, that sort of thing that kind of like link together, but. Yeah. Cool. I had never heard of um, Osmosis Con until you guys were going. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you should definitely look into yeah. it for next year. I'm hosted by Hetherington group and this is, let's see, that was their fifth year doing it. And it was just, it, it's been a very good uh, networking, meeting some really other, really smart people. That was in Florida, right? Vegas. Last year was in Florida. Next oh, okay. time is in um, San Diego. Oh, San Diego. Yeah. Last year was Vegas. So. <clears throat> ah. Yeah, and it's always to... top notch as far as hotels and all that sort of thing goes as well. It's, it's always top notch. And it's reasonably priced too. I mean, it, as far as conferences go and stuff. Uh, yeah. Nice. Especially a conference of that, that kind of, uh, I guess, nice atmosphere yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah all right let's um we're done with the news let's get to talking about maybe some shameless self-promotion um i'm going to ask you each to tell me what you're you know what's going on and you can let me know first we'll start with our guest ray <laughs> what do you got going on um i just have a few blogs going on um i guess the only thing i can really promote is that and uh, operation safe escape <laughs> Um, besides that, I'm just going to school. And <laughs> All right. Ray, are you going to be looking for a job in X number of months or years in OSINT? Months? No. <laughs> years? But, I mean, I'd take one now, but, okay. uh, you know, I don't have a degree in it yet, so. You don't have to have a degree I, to be good in yeah, something. I would say there's like, if you want to know how many people without a, without a degree, especially if we're talking about specifics they may have a degree in something completely different yeah yeah i mean 100 percent, i'll be looking for jobs so if anybody wants to hire me i work very hard <laughs> all right cool. cool all right uh sector what do you got going on i'm gonna take a lovely week off next week I'm busy with my uh, newsletter. It's done, but I'm migrating the whole stuff. And I'm going to make some more time to write some blogs. I've got some ideas that I want to share on Ozen Curious. And I still, I'm, I'm finally going to write part two of the shadow and sun calculation that Micah put in sec, uh, in his uh, Ozen course. So it's going to be a part two, finally. Nice. All right, Ginsburg. Um, I was just at Hacker Halted out in Georgia. I gave a talk out there that went over, I guess, pretty well. Um, That's good. I, dude, thank you. <laughs> I, still put, I still have to put the slides up, so everyone's keep bugging me over that, but that's okay. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of other stuff going on for the rest of the year. I am giving a talk out at AMC for their uh, executive kind of leadership stuff about, you know, the perils of being able to be found on on the web and you know what you can do to protect yourself and the more of that passive threat landscape stuff um but yeah just twitter uh and then i'll be putting some more stuff up on osint curious here pre within the next month or so so we'll see about that all right micah i got yours up already here Awesome. Well, I have something special to announce for the first time ever. Um, the amazing guys over at Trace Labs are working with SANS, uh, the company that I work with. And at our CDI events, our Cyber Defense Initiative event in Washington, D.C. in December, we are going to be offering a missing person CTF. And the Trace Labs people are coming to Washington, D.C. for two nights. 
And anybody that is going to CDI, uh, taking any class at CDI, will be able to participate in the OSINT Missing Person CTF and help uh, Trace Labs achieve their OSINT goals. So uh, doing a little bit of OSINT for good mm -hmm. at SANS and uh, really looking forward to, to, uh, to working with them and to, yeah, to doing cool. that. Yep, nice. and also, um, uh, just one other thing, I have um, a, I, I've taken some of the great work that Kirby and Technozet have done with Facebook, and I'm making like a 10 minute tip video, which will be a teaser for their webcast that they're going to be doing at a date TBD. That's right, we have one coming up. We've been discussing it, planning it out, but we have not got a date set for it just yet. Cool. All right. That's all I got, Kurt. All right, cool. All right, so what do I have coming up? I actually have a couple of OSINT training classes. We've got November 19th. Um, these are open enrollment for law enforcement or law enforcement type. So what I mean is like global investigators, your uh, private investigators, law enforcement, investigators for social security, investigators for you know IRS, that sort of thing. Um, and that is, again, we've got November 19th in Dallas and we have January 21 in Jacksonville. So if anybody's interested, go to my website, pluses.net and send us a, a message about it. Or we had a couple of ads running on Facebook and we'll have some landing pages here shortly. I also just wanted to quickly say also, I have this interning with Pluses Experts Network up. And yes, we're open for interns, but you do have to be college students to be an intern for us. So Ray Baker. Um. Yeah. Well, well, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But what, what I'm pointing out is that we, we get, we're getting a few um, requests, but we really want to keep that to college students. So yeah, the the remote aspect is where I have the hardest time because so many people want you to be there, but it's oh yeah, ours is it's a virtual yeah. internship. <laughs> ours cool. is. Did you did you hit Nico and ask him where he's going to be? I'm sorry, I missed oh, that. Oh, sorry, I don't know if I did. I miss you, Nico. Where are you going to be? Uh, I'll be next first day. I'll be at the Chiba Warfare Community event, and I'll be at the Info Security event on the thirtieth and. 31st of October in Utrecht and I'll be in London in November for Shans and I'll be at wow. the Tweakers <laughs> Cyber Summit in November. So I'm busy. You are busy. You yeah. should have uh, an event section also in Ocean Curious where we can people can go to see you know one of us. And mm -hmm. then so so like a, would you say like a calendar that would be mm, uh, like something that has like days on it and you could like write yeah. them. Yeah, I mean, we have an OSINT Curious calendar that oh. Sector's been maintaining for oh, months. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll add them. I haven't been putting my stuff on it then. <laughs> well, we'll publicize that more. I think that's what you're saying, right? We need yes, to publicize yeah, that we have an OSINT community calendar. Yes, I got and that. And we'll members need to put their stuff on it. How's that? <laughs> All right, all right. Yeah, and I'm also uh, started uh, doing the part two of the Twitter algorithm um, manipulation blog and searching Twitter, not using Twitter blog. Mm -hmm. All right. And I just want to say about the Trace Labs event that you're doing, um, a lot of people starting in OSINT don't realize how easy it is to get into it through Trace Labs because you're surrounded by a bunch of other people who are generally just starting out, and it's kind of a, a very easy primer for how to start uh, yeah, one, of the why, one of the reasons why i kept bringing it up to people is because it was like live action it was you know you had the ability to go through and kind of flex your sense kind of mindset but it was something you didn't need to get a whole bunch of tools set up for you could literally just you know as long as you had a good browser and internet connection you know you could sit down and you could manually work your way through all the stuff it's it's really been one of those things that i you know when people say oh how do you get into it you know it's it's one of the things I, I, I look to and say, hey, uh, try, try to find this or, you know. Another thing yeah. for Trace Labs, I mean, another good reason to start there is because they do have structure as well. Yeah. They'll say, okay, here's kind of like the rules of engagement so that people don't step on any, you know, law enforcement yeah. cases or put or, or, you know, or relatives. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. It, is, it is pretty good. And like I said, during, during the time of me running events or talking with those guys or doing anything, um, you really find a lot of people that want to go through and do very, very good things in the either OSIN community or just investigative journey, you know, stuff, whatever. So it's it's a it's a good group to get into. Their Slack is pretty good. It's not toxic. Yeah. It's, it's nice. I stuff. like their Slack. Yep. Yep. It's very helpful. Lots of resources. Yeah. And people want to help, which is nice. So, yeah, it's cool.
Not not to keep getting on them, but they're good guys. And we've had them on stuff too, so yeah. That's right. All right. Um, any more comments at all for today? We are right at the hour, so it is time to cut, but I want to say thank you. Thank you so much, Ray, for joining thank us. You. Thank and you. thank you to all of our uh, participants and our attendees as well. And I think that's, that's it. it. Yeah. yeah, thank all you. Right. Bye, everybody. Yeah, thanks. Bye -bye. All right.